Continuing on with our geology notes, so first we did page one, and then we did page two, and now we're on to page three. This is the third of our types of plate boundaries. It is a transform plate boundary. This is the one we are on, so we're not gonna really draw the magma in here because it doesn't come into play. And so this one is pretty quick and easy. So here are the two plates slip past each other. And some of them are called strike slip faults. And um, I've seen that term on the AP test before, so I want you to make sure you know that term for the, most of the time they're called transform plate boundaries. Sorry, I didn't mean to cross that. I meant to underline it. Um, but sometimes they're called strike slip faults. And so um, basically the plates are sliding past each other. And you still have your magma down here, but it's not coming into play in this one. I just move this pretty fast. So if you need to rewind and, and uh, finish that, you can. <clears throat> So a well-known example is really close to us, the San Andreas Fault. It's between Santa Clarita and Palmdale is the plate boundary. And it's the boundary between the Pacific Plate and the North American Plate. So we are on the Pacific Plate and further east from us in the Antelope Valley, they are on the North American Plate. And then the rest of the country is on the North American plate. <clears throat> the next type of volcano. So we've had a couple of types of volcanoes. We have um, ones that are formed on land um, <clears throat> from an ocean, oceanic continental. This is a, an example of here. I'm gonna put this up here. Example is Washington and Oregon. So all of the um, volcanoes along the coast of Washington and Oregon, like Mount Hood in Oregon, Mount um, St. Helens that erupted a couple decades ago in Washington, Mount Rainier next to Seattle, they're all a chain of volcanoes because of the, there's a plate boundary here that looks like this off its coast. And so we have this line of volcanoes. So it's not just one, it's a line of volcanoes on the continent that look like that. <clears throat> and the second type of volcanoes we have here are the volcanic island arcs that are in the ocean. So are there an island chain in the ocean made by this process? But sometimes you can have an island chain in the ocean created from a hot spot. So the Hawaiian Islands are an example of this. So let's go ahead and draw all of our, our volcano first. <clears throat> so we have here the magma. And let's say that this is um, our plate boundary here but it's not coming into play in this. So this is nothing to do with the plate boundary. So in the middle of plate, so way over here in the middle of the plate, sometimes there's a crack in the crust. So let me actually draw our ocean up here. We have our crust and our lithosphere and there's cracks that go up through, it's like a, it can be like just a, a cluster of cracks like that. And so the magma rises 
up and it starts to make an island as it hits the ocean water and these are called seamounts as well and then eventually it grows because the magma keeps coming out okay so eventually you're going to form this volcano above land and it's going to be an island and so this is what hawaii is so this is the hawaiian islands And this is on the Pacific plate. And so this is the middle of the island. It's not on a plate boundary. So we're not even worried about a plate boundary in this one. You can leave it there if you drew it in pen. It's not a big deal. What happens is this occurs in the middle of a plate. And this is where the crust has cracks and magma seeps up. <clears throat> now, why do we have a chain of islands then? Well, because the plates continue to move. Where Hawaii is, that plate continues to kind of move um, in kind of a northeast direction. So it's in the middle of the Pacific plate And the Pacific Plate is kind of moving in a northeast direction, uh, northwest, sorry, northwest direction. And so the newest island is in the bottom corner, the one that continues to have lava. So if you've ever been to the Hawaiian Islands, the one that's erupting is the big island, which is in the bottom corner. And the older ones, the oldest one is furthest away. And so over thousands of years, the islands will move away from the hot spot and a new one comes up. In fact, there's a new Hawaiian, Hawaiian island that's currently a seamount because those cracks are making it. It will become above water, but it might take another thousand years. Okay, we can also have the same in the middle of a continental plate. We have one in Yellowstone National Park, we actually have this flat volcano. So we have this magma that has come up, but it doesn't really um, create a, a dome. So it's a kind of like, uh, most of it is, is underground, but it hits the groundwater and it creates geysers and geothermal activity. So we call it like a flat volcano because it doesn't have a dome shape like other volcanoes have. So we, um, this is Yellowstone hot spot and it is a flat volcano and scientists call it a mega volcano because when it erupts, it will be catastrophic. Um, <clears throat> but it's not expected to erupt anytime soon, thankfully. And so this is the North American plate. And so I, even though this looks like they're close, they're not close to the plate boundary. This is, you know, um, a thousand miles in from the plate boundary, and this is several thousand miles away from the plate boundary. So those are in the middle of the plates. <clears throat> You need to know some important plate locations. So the AP test often has a map and it expects you to know several important features. So you do not have to memorize all the plates, but you do need to know a few important plate locations. So the first thing you need to know is that down the middle of the Atlantic Ocean is the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Make it go through that, that's Iceland. So this is Iceland. So I told you that's one of the only places where you can see the, I'm gonna put a big dot here, the um, Mid-Atlantic Ridge on land. Um, another place you can see a divergent plate boundary is here. So right about here is the second place. So that's the African Rift Valley 
where two plates are being pulled apart from each other and creates a big rift down the middle. Okay. Now let's talk about um, convergent plate boundaries where two plates are smashing up against each other. So one of them is here. So these are the Himalayas. So at the top of India, between India and Nepal. And so that is this one right here. So this third one, so we have three, one, two, three types of convergent plate boundaries. It's this one, continental, continental. Let's go ahead and label the oceanic, oceanic ones, which are Japan and the Aleutian Islands. So over here, this is Japan. And this is a volcanic island arc. Then the other one you need to know is up here in Alaska. And it's a little bit off the, the picture over here because it kind of goes this way. It's an island, uh, a chain of islands up here. And this is the Aleutian Islands. in Alaska, so I'm gonna put AK for Alaska, and it is a volcanic island arc. Okay, that's gonna get a little bit crowded in here, so um, let's put some dots over here. And so this is Oregon, Washington, and it's a big subduction zone. So we know that there is a big tsunami and earthquake threat in Oregon and Washington. If you're ever on the coast up in Oregon and Washington, they have signs that tell you where to go if there's a tsunami warning. It basically is a sign that says, go that way, which is upwards. So you wanna to get to high ground um, as quick as you can if you feel an earthquake. <clears throat> that does not occur down here, so our fault line down here is transformed. Now we have earthquakes, but we don't have the tsunami risk even off our coast. We can have tsunamis off our coast, but not really from subduction. Usually when we have some tsunami warnings, it's from, um, it could be a little shaking. Like if, if we have a big earthquake, we could get a tsunami just because the earth is moving and causing water's displacement, but not the big tsunamis that come from a subduction zone. But it is still something. So if you're ever at the beach and you feel an earthquake, get up to high ground as soon as possible. So this is the San Andreas Fault. Here in California. Over here, this is the Hawaiian Islands. And so it is a hot spot volcano. So it's in the middle of the plate. The plate boundary um, kind of goes like, like this. And so it's way here in the middle of the plate. It's not on a plate boundary. And then we have over here, we have Yellowstone. And that's another hot spot volcano. <clears throat> so these are the um, features that sometimes are on the AP test. So they'll give you a map of the world and they'll say like A, B, C, D. And they'll say which one is where you can see uh, the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. And so you'd want to pick D or whatever letter that was. And so, um, that is why we labeled the map. And so these are pretty much the, the most famous plate locations and the ones most likely to be on the AP test.